Welcome to Nexus Edge, the show that'll help you get an edge on your competition. I am, of course, your esteemed host, Turd Herder, and we're coming to you live for some Season 9, Week 6 recap of the Nexus Gaming Series. And we have a very highly energetic episode. So without further ado, let's get right into it. I'm joined here today with my very special, my favorite co-host, week after week, Ryokai. How are you doing, Ryokai? Thank you, Turd. I'm doing good. Uh, Gilly Shark. Uh, wasn't as successful last week, but we've got two matches uh, tomorrow and Thursday night, so excited to play those and hopefully make playoffs. Awesome, yeah. It's, the season's wrapping up. And, I mean, I'm I'm turd herder, so I get the pedal for the Nexus Cats. We're doing all right. Anyways, moving on. So, this week we're talking about the Heroic Division and Division E. So, if you look right over there, we got the... Heroic division standings. Ryoka, you want to go over those for me? Sure. So Heroic, of course, the highest level of play in NGS, uh, following, of course, second to uh, Divi. Um, but lots of talented players up here. Uh, lots of high-ranking players are competing. And if you want some high-level hots, this is where you got to watch. you got to tune into these games, see the uh, hot Heroic action going down. So first off, we take these. They are, so far, having a perfect season. Yes. Uh, very tough, especially in Heroic. Um, they are doing it, the only team doing it, I believe, in a uh, cross of all of NGS, and they are 9 for 9 at the moment, without dropping a single bat. So, really doing good. <laughs> um, they've got five of the top six KDA uh, stat players in Heroic so far. Um, really hard to get kills on them, obviously. They're winning most of their games. Uh, they're averaging a little tiny bit over three deaths per game, so keeping that uh, very limited. Obviously, if you're dying that little, you're probably going to be soaking a lot. You're probably going to be winning a whole bunch of team fights, and probably winning most objectives and yada yada yada, winning the game. Um, but they have two upcoming matches against uh, Regen and Press Forward to show kind of if they are going to be the main clear favorite going into playoffs and just securing the number one seed, or if maybe somebody's going to catch them, uh, maybe getting a bit overconfident here coming into playoffs or whatever, or um, you know catching them a little bit on the back foot putting a little bit of a, a question mark into that so yeah awesome and the thing is her heroic team being nine and nine that's incredibly impressive um and less than three i think that's the most impressive stat in all of ngs is a bit over three deaths per game i uh, i think most teams average like six or seven deaths per game just across all divisions that's just throwing it out there. But I do want to point out, looking at the Heroic Division standings, if you look at the 6th, 7th, and 8th seed, there is a three-point differential, and ninth, sorry, between Archon and the 6th seed Choking Hazard. So those teams are right there building, fighting for a playoff spot right now as the season's wrapping up. There is a little bit of uh, favor going towards quarantine in 7th place, as they have only played seven of their matches. But I did want to point out there that it's, it's really close. So, moving on, we got CPOG X. Did we go over that? Nope. Nope. So, these guys were in Division S, and they were fifth in the standings currently in NGS, but they haven't played as many games as the other teams. So, they have five do dominations out of seven of their matches, and they've already played two of the top teams of the division. So, Going forward, they're going to have some room to kind of move forward in the standings and get a more favorable seed. So their their strength of schedule is a bit easier moving forward. And they're the only team that's beaten press forward so far. And Tremor on Seed Pog X has 56k damage taken with 48k damage taken per death, averaging on we take these. I didn't specify that. He's first in the division. That ratio is insane. The Amount of damage he's averaging without getting killed. I mean, this is that essential stat we're talking about, where they're getting less than three deaths per game, or about three deaths per game. And C Paul Tremor on We Take These is a big factor in that. He's just not dying. He's taking fights and he's just managing to not drop. And press on. Press forward, we got Lork11. Is that how you pronounce that? What, how, how, how would you say that, Rio? Yep. Lork? Lork? Lors? I don't know. Lork, Lork. is probably right. Yeah, yeah, we'll go with Lork. He, our analyst considers him a carry for the team. 61k average hero damage, second in the division, 
3K damage per minute being fourth and an 11.3 KDA being fourth in the division. Ryoka, you got any additional comments on Heroic? Yeah, I had a couple of uh, stats notes that I pulled up here. So uh, Heroic, uh, of course, Sylvanas still sitting up there, 69% win rate. Nice. 26 games. She's doing good. Uh, also, Samuro and Zarya, a bit uh, less popular heroes, but also doing very well. Samuro sitting 78% er, yeah, win rate over nine games, and Zarya 71% over seven games. As for some heroes, perhaps this, I found these pretty surprising, not doing so well in Heroic. Raynor, Leeming, and Deckard, all very popular heroes. Raynor, 35% win rate over 31 games. Leeming, 29% win rate over 27 games. And Deckard, 35% win rate over 17 games. So I don't know if Heroic has maybe figured out some counters to these heroes, or if it's they're only getting through draft when it's the lower end team being able to play them or something. I don't exactly know what's causing that to happen, but I would have said that those are three pretty strong heroes across the board, and they're all pretty popular across NGS. And uh, for some reason, all three in Heroic are not doing so hot. So I don't know what's yeah, up with that, but that's interesting. That's really weird, because I think you just listed the three best win rate heroes in Division D&E. <laughs> I mean, not actually. It's, I, I think it's Malfurion or someone else. We'll get to that. But that that's absurd. Do, do you happen to know if that's possibly post the Exterminator nerf? How many of them? Uh, it's probably both before and after, because okay. it's just games over the whole season. But that's insane. I don't, I don't feel like that should have made that much of a difference. No, not at all. I mean, if anything, I think the Exterminator nerf just brought him back to where, where he should be as a PvE camp clear, wave clear hero. Interesting. All right, well, moving on, let's talk about Division E. So there's an elephant in the room here. All right, so I know it's not too obvious, but I'm clearly Turd Herder, but right now I'm going to speak as not Turd Herder because I, I don't want to say these things in his name. So Cerebral Gaming has been removed from NGS, and that's because they're pieces of shit, and they're cheaters, and we don't stand for that. I do not speak for NGS whenever I say they are pieces of shit. I am speaking as Arthanol, but NGS is a place, in particular during these crazy times, quarantine, COVID, all the other stuff, where we're here to have fun, and we're, we're here to have a good time. And don't be like Cerebral Gaming. Just I, I don't understand how someone can enjoy cheating and ruining someone else's experience, so... I'm sorry, Nexus Edge, I took away your PG-13 rating by using the strong language right now, even though I'm just a guest this week. But So Cerebral Gaming, they're out. Don't be like them. They're a bunch of dirty smurfs. Those guys. Yeah, I, I, I fully agree. So, all right, Turret Herder here. Now, Welcome now back that, to Thank you. So now that they're out on the way, Division E has completely opened up on the top side of the division. So now we got one more fight who is actually completely undefeated, though they don't have dominations. They're not nine for nine in dominations, like uh, press forward, or we take these. But they haven't lost a series, which is still really impressive. They were a division, e, division D team last season, and they didn't do too, too hot last season. They got bumped down to Division E, but they seem to have found their place. And I think now, I, I've seen some of their games. So they could very much compete in Division D with how they're competing right now. They seem to have found their stride. They seem to find their place in the competitive setting because Division E is it, its a lot of people's first experience in competitive hot. So a lot of it's just learning some of the strong fundamentals of team communication, soaking, and team fighting. And it seems one more fight has found their place. And uh, Ryoka, you want to talk about we the Papegas? Papegas? Pa -pa 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 -pa. Of course. So. Uh, with the Papegas, another DivD team, which did get moved down into Division E this season. Uh, it's not really a surprise that they're performing well, considering that. Uh, they've got six dominations in seven matches. Uh, their only loss coming, of course, to one more fight, who is undefeated in matches. Um, and this is a double round robin division, so these two teams will have one more regular season matchup, uh, still to come in the double round robin format uh, matchups. And then uh, it's looking like they'll both make it to playoffs. Probably. I'm not sure if that's 100% confirmed, but probably is. Um, and so this is possibly likely even a Div E finals, grand finals matchup, 
Uh, so we might get a little bit of a, a preview there. It might go one and one, and then the finals will decide it once and for all. It'll be great. Uh, so yeah, definitely a cool narrative there going on with them. Uh, two players to highlight here. First off, Aura Luna from Yavapai, uh, the rest of their name. <laughs> they are joining the team in Season 9. Uh, they've played 14 games so far. They've got 69,000 nice average healing, uh, which is first in the division, and a 3.8k healing per minute, also first in the division. Uh, they are playing a lot of Rhaegar and Anduin uh, for their go-to healers that they are choosing to play, and they're definitely contributing a good bit to uh, the recent uh, kind of, uh, let's say, turnaround or or hitting their stride that, that Yavabai has had in sort of the second half of the season so far. They are on an upward trajectory. They, I think, weren't doing super well uh, at the start of the season, but they've definitely turned it around. Um, so they were struggling a bit at the start. And then second up here, I'm just going to say Chelsea. Seems close enough, probably right. On with the Papegas, um, has 53,000 average hero damage and 2.9 thousand damage per minute, which are also both first in the division. Uh, they've got a 9.6 KDA, which is second in the division. And so having a high KDA, good damage output, that's going to be a good recipe for success as far as a damage dealer uh, goes and, you know, sets up their team to have good success overall. And to round it out, a couple Div E stats here. Uh, Deathwing, 89% win rate in Div E so far, 17 games. Definitely, Deathwing doing well. ETC also doing super well, 73% win rate in 11 games. But Blaze, not doing well, 33% win rate in 15 games. So Blaze is actually more popular than ETC, which I was kind of surprised by. I think he's probably still being played mostly as offlane, but he can be a tank sometimes. I don't know. I haven't looked into the games specifically to see what he was being played as. But uh, more popular than ETC was surprising. Deathwing also being pretty popular was uh, somewhat surprising. I mean, compared to ETC. Uh, but yeah, Blaze not getting the wins, but overall, just some quick notes there from Division. So I do want to point out that uh, We the Papegas and One More Fight, it's not on the schedule, but it's supposed to happen their second round next calendar week. So look forward to that. That might be a potential game of the week matchup. I don't know. Or it's a, it's a matchup to keep your eye on. And uh, Blaze, 33% over 15 games. That's interesting. I wonder if that has to do... I, I've seen some Blazes igniting their oil spills. Don't do that. If you're new to Blaze, don't do that. You will be 100 times better at Blaze immediately if you do not ignite those oil spills. So if you're a Blaze player and you didn't know that, free piece of advice today. So, moving on, we got our edgiest match of the week. And it's going to be between the Heroic Division Mainstays Anti-Clown Association versus Press Forward. And that's going to be Wednesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. And we're going to have the absolutely lovely Tetcher casting that. So that's going to be a very good time. So Anti-Clown Association, they were the champions of Heroic Division in Season 8, which was last season. Yeah, we're in Season 9. Uh, but the rosters have kind of changed around a little bit. That's why... You know, they're not quite as dominant as they were, but they're still in a very, very strong fourth place, if I'm correct. Yeah, fourth place. Sounds right, yeah. Yeah. So they still have a lot of potential, and the, the season, there's still plenty of season left, and we haven't even gotten into the playoffs. So there's still a team to look forward to. And so I think this is going to be a good matchup to see who's going to get top seed because this is a good opportunity for anti association to move up into a favorable top three seed, especially with the win off of press forward. So a player to note is we got Kelsier, Kelsier, Cal, Kaiser, Kelsier. I'm going to go with Kelsier. And he, he's one of the one, he's one of the two remaining me members of the season eight championship team. He, he's not really at the top of the main stats category, but he does have 53 kills which makes him second in the whole division and averages only 1.2 deaths per game. So he's always there as a threat as a damage dealer. His Hanzo, his Maev, and his Rainer are absolutely excellent. It, all those heroes are just really hard to kill. They have a fair bit of self-peel or sustain to keep them alive. And Ryokai, you want to tell me a little bit about Press Forward? Of course. So Press Forward, uh, new team in NGS so far. Uh, you probably recognize a few of the players. Um, they're doing pretty well so far. They've got seven dominations in, in nine matches so far. Um, they're sitting at second place on the standings. 
And if they win against ACA, it sets up a big end of season finale, regular season uh, match with We Take These uh, to finish it off. So uh, looking to finish out their season strong against two uh, fairly strong teams. So we'll see how they do. Um, player to highlight here from Press Forward is Kirito. Um, they are the healer player on Press Forward. In 13 games, they have had an average healing of 69,000. Nice. First in the division. And a 3.9k healing per minute, also first in the division. And uh, Stukov is their main healer. Uh, got seven games on Stukov, so a tiny bit over halfway there, uh, most of their games being on Stukov. So a uh, bit uh, interesting there, especially since Deckard's not doing as well, that uh, maybe Stukov is the way to go in uh, in Heroic, at least. So It seems like Stukov's seen a rise, regardless of having really any changes in I don't know how long, across all divisions. I should say, all important silence. Yeah, silence but, is definitely always strong. But uh, that's that's our game of the week this week, so don't forget, check it out over on Tetris channel, 10 p.m. Eastern time. So uh, with that in mind, I believe we have the Bronzer GM segment. Yes, we do. Which, hey, everybody. This is Lighthouse, in case you didn't know. We do have the Bronzer GM uh, this week. Turd and Rio still have no idea what the topics are, what we're talking about. So let's dive right in. We have the first question. Now that Washed Up has dropped out, does Rio want to revise his best logo pick? Do we think that's a good idea or a bad idea? I'm going to say that would be a good idea because I can't have the best logo be team that isn't playing right it kind of defeats the purpose are you even a team if you're not playing can you even have a logo so hmm. as this was spurred on to me i don't know what the phrase is for that right <laughs> this minute i do not have a pick parsley is probably a good pick i think they were my honorable mention in the past so we'll go with parsley you don't have to suck up to me rio you're already on the show i really dislike doing that <laughs> but unfortunately i had to all right, uh, for the next question, this is for both of you. How do we feel about main tank Imperius? If you've been watching any oh. of the Method uh, tournament, that's uh, main tank Imperius is making a quite the showing. Do we think that's a good idea or a bad idea? Oh. I think Arthur now should go first. I have opinions. Um, I mean, sorry, Turd Herder. Turd Herder, yes, yes, <laughs> I, Turd Herder. So... This has been a big conversation point of my team lately. Um, I think it was brought up by the uh, Nexus Now podcast. Is that is that where this has all been coming from? I feel like I've heard it a lot. Has, from that. has Nexus Now had a podcast? I was just wondering that myself. <laughs> I haven't. I feel like they haven't had a podcast. In this month. The Mark Zombie from Twitch.tv always lets me know, so I'm pretty sure they still do. Okay. Was, uh, it was if one. Had, I, like, I haven't heard it. So. Anyway, so my thoughts on that. Main take Imperius, so I'm a lowly Division D player, offlane, you know, turd herder offlane. And I don't necessarily think main tank is the place. I think more controversially, he should be a melee assassin. That's spicy. That, yes. And XGD actually ran out against us to uh, great effect. And I, I think the reason why is, you know, you got a melee assassin with good self sustain. A stun. Most melee assassins don't have that. He's hard to kill. Why not? You know, just just don't let them pick Tychus or anything against your extremely beefy team. That's my thought. Okay. I, I, so of the three roles, melee assassin, offlane, and main tank, what's your, your 1, 2, 3 ranking? I'm going to put melee, melee assassin, assassin the as the top. I'm going to say main tank and then offlane, actually. Huh. I'm, okay. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be controversial with it. I'm gonna say, I think he's best off lane. I might agree with you that he's probably second best as melee assassin, and I think third best <laughs> tank. All right. So you both think this is a bad idea, main tank Imperius. But what did did we rate it second and third? Third and third. I mean, at both times you rated it third, so that tells me it's a bad idea. But is it a worse idea? I think it still works, is the thing. It's yeah. better than a lot of other bad ideas. That way. I mean, let, let's take a look but at That doesn't the... make it a good idea. 
So, I mean, you could pick, like, main tank Muradin and have a worse time than uh, main tank okay. Imperius. Buff tanks. Yeah. Buff tanks. Buff tanks, that's actually, I think that's uh, been a post in uh, the, on Reddit. Never Buff seen tanks. it. <laughs> Reddit doesn't exist. All right. No. This is now an agree or disagree segment for the next three questions, the last three questions. Uh, going back to the method tournament, Zalia does not pick Ruby when playing Deckard. Does that mean he's washed up? <laughs> Isn't it his last dance? <laughs> That's what the team is <laughs> called. Uh, I disagree. Ruby's OP. The end. So you disagree that he's washed up, but he doesn't pick Ruby? I agree... No. Disagree he's washed up. Disagree that he's not picking Ruby. <laughs> I think. I'm confused now. He's washed up. He's not picking Ruby. Get with the times, man. <laughs> nah, I, I still respect Zaylee a lot. He's uh, definitely still a really good player. He's a great player. But Ru still Ruby's so good. good. Yeah. Ruby should be picking it. Ruby. Pick Ruby. You'd be better, man. All right. This is also a support question. Now, this is actually submitted by someone else, though. Uh, the meta is driven by Rhaegar. Do we agree or disagree? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think if we were to look throughout, you know, all of HOTS history since beta and talk about where Rhaegar was, I think there's a philosophical solid argument with that. So I'm going to agree. Not necessarily the NGS meta, but just over the course of HOTS, it's always revolved around Rhaegar's ancestral healing or bloodlust. I think I'm going to disagree. Uh, <laughs> mostly because I think he's not that good. He's, he's good in niche comps, but not as generally as people seem to have thought, I think. And I feel like he was really bad for a long time, like yeah. two years. That you're you're you have some historical, whatever, uh, anecdotes that are before my time, so I can't really speak on that. But yeah, I feel like he was not really that good for a long time. That I feel like he can't really be driving the meta. So, all right, disagree. So I, I think, yeah, disagree. Uh, I, I'm 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 gonna go into it just a little bit. So I think, yeah. So there was a very long period of time where he wasn't good, but every time he's just slightly overtuned, he's the most popular hero in the game, it feels like. And right now, I'm seeing so many Bloodlust co cops just everywhere, even though it's kind of a comp, but it keeps coming up, and whenever Ancestral could be cast on himself before they took it away, like, three or four years ago, like, he was the only guy picked. They were like, I'm gonna play Rhaegar Melee Assassin. I'm gonna play Rhaegar Solo Healer. I'm gonna play Rhaegar whatever. And so the meta has always revolved around Rhaegar. I think that is factual. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I've all said right. My piece. and the last question for bronze or gm this time who is the best offlaner and why is it blaze do we agree <laughs> or disagree? i don't how can i answer that question with agree or disagree do you agree with blaze <laughs> um if i told you who submitted this would it change your mind at all it's a zerial it is a Zeriel, you're <laughs> correct. <laughs> um, I think Blaze is possibly the best offlane. Not just because Zeriel mainly plays him <laughs> and had very good success with him. Uh, I think Leoric is up there. Pretty close. But I think it's between Leoric and Blaze, probably. So you Blaze is the off best offlane. But Blaze is really good. People sleep on Blaze. Just don't go combustion. Always go bunker. I don't understand people who go combustion. I suspect that people sleep on Blaze because he's underneath tank, and when they're looking for bruisers at the last second, they don't see him listed at all. Yep, I do that. So I turd hurt her in a match yesterday, misclicked <laughs> and picked combustion, by the way. I just, I just wanted everyone to know that I misclicked and picked combustion. It worked out, but I was supposed yeah. to pick bunker and I didn't. I, I like uh, so Tur. Just so you know, we were watching that match, and um, oh, no. a, lot of, a lot of times we kept going. You know, it would be nice here, not combustion. Oh, it'd be nice to have. <laughs> here. It was a misclick. It was in the heat of the moment. I, <laughs> we, we said pick ten, pick ten. So I was like, okay. We've so all I been there. Combustion. I almost threw the game for my team. All right. 
Oh, I'm glad you were here to clear the air on clicks. Yeah, just, just everyone needed to know. <laughs> All right, well, that's our Bronzer GM segment. So every week we're trying new things. And so I believe that's our show, Rio. You got anything? I think that's all we got. Well, I've been Turd Herder here, and this has been Rio. Where, where, where can the people find you, Rio? Uh, they can find me at, at Turd Herder underscore Hots. I don't know. At Twitch.tv. Um, he's not on... I'm not on Twitter. I'm not on Reddit. I don't have a YouTube. Uh, I'm in the NGS Discord at Turd Herder. <laughs> and adios, amigos. That's all we got, folks. Thank you for tuning in.